Welcome friends. Today we focus our discussion on the paper ethics. Definition of ethics. The word ethics is derived from the Greek word ethica which comes from the word ethos. Ethos means customs, usages or habits. Ethics is also called moral philosophy. The word moral is derived from the Latin substantive mos which means customs or habits. Customs are not merely habitual ways of acting. They are ways approved by the group. Literally ethics means the science of customs or habits of man. It is the science of habitual conduct of man. Habits are the expression of settled disposition of the will or character. Character is the permanent habit of willing the inner bent of the mind which is expressed in habitual conduct. Character is the inner counterpart of conduct which is its outer expression. Thus, ethics is the science of character and conduct. It evaluates the voluntary action and habitual action of persons and considers their rightness and wrongness. It evaluates the character of persons and considers its virtuousness or viciousness. Ethics is the science of rightness and wrongness of conduct. Conduct is purposive action which involves choice and will. It is the experiences of character which is a settled habit of will. The will is the self in action. Thus, ethics is the science of human character as expressed in right or wrong conduct. But the rightness or wrongness refers to the good which is the ideal of human life. Thus, ethics is the science of the highest good. It is the science of morality. Unlike psychology, ethics concerned with evaluation of conduct with reference to an ideal. It teaches us how we can pass correct moral judgments upon human conduct, consider it as right or wrong with reference to the supreme ideal of human life. Ethics is a science of the ideal involved in human life. It is the science of the highest good of man. Therefore, ethics may be defined as the science of the highest good. It is the science of highest end or purpose of human life. Mackenzie defines ethics as the study of what is right or good in human conduct or the science of the ideal involved in human life. The ideal involved in human life includes truth, good and beauty. Ethics is the science of the moral good of man. Nature of ethics. Ethics is a science which is a systematic knowledge. It deals with human conduct together with the inner volitions and their motives systematically. It is a science in so far as it depends upon observation, classification and explanation of human conduct with reference to an ideal. Science can be classified into positive or descriptive science and normative science. Positive science is that which deals with what is. On the other hand, normative science deals with values. The sciences which are studied in the laboratories of our universities are descriptive or positive sciences. They describe objects or phenomena as we observe them with our eyes and other sense organs. That is, in a positive science, no question of judging its objects in any way. For example, a botanist never judges whether a certain plant is good or bad or beautiful or ugly. A positive science deals with facts and explains them by their causes. It tries to know what a thing really is by discovering its relation to other things, especially its causal relations. A positive science is also called a natural science. They are concerned with facts or events and investigate certain uniformities 
or laws which governed them. They describe the ways in which certain classes of objects are found to exist in nature. They have no direct reference to any end or ideal by reference to which facts are judged. On the other hand, normative science seeks to determine norms, ideals or standards. There are three ideals of human life, truth, beauty and good. These are the supreme values in human experience. They correspond to the three aspects of our conscious life, knowing, feeling and willing. Logic is concerned with the general conditions involved in the pursuit of truth. Aesthetics is concerned with the certain and appreciation of beauty. Ethics is concerned with what is right in human action in the pursuit of good. Thus, logic Aesthetics and ethics are normative sciences because they are concerned with the ideals of truth, beauty and good respectively. They are concerned with norms, ideals or values. They are not concerned with facts or events that happen in nature. Logic is the science of truth, ethics is the science of good, aesthetic is the science of beauty. Truth is the ideal of knowledge. Good is the ideal of will, beauty is the ideal of feeling or emotion. Ethics is not a positive science. It is not concerned with the nature, origin and growth of human conduct. It does not explain human actions by means of certain laws. It is not concerned with conduct as a fact or event in space and time. It is concerned with judgment upon conduct its rightness and wrongness. Ethics is not concerned with human conduct as it is but as it ought to be. It passes judgment of value upon human action with reference to the moral ideal. It is not concerned with judgments of fact but with judgments of value. Judgments of facts are judgments of what is. Judgments of value are judgments of what ought to be. The former are called factual judgments while the latter are called critical or appreciative judgments. Thus, ethics is not a positive science but a normative science. A normative science is also called a regulative science. Normative sciences are not concerned with actual facts or their laws. but with norms which regulate human life. Normative sciences deal with values. They give us systematic valuing of our voluntary actions. They do not merely describe the standards by which we judge. They are also concerned with the validity of truth of these standards. Ethics has been defined as the normative science of conduct and conduct is a collective name for voluntary actions. A voluntary action is an action that a man could have done differently if he had so chosen. Voluntary actions include all willed or volitional actions in which there is conscious process of willing like the actions of a student matriculating in a university. There are several terms commonly used in judging human actions by ethical standards. We say that an action is good or bad, right or wrong, moral or immoral. We say that we ought to do an action, that we should do it or that is our duty to do it. The words ought and duty certainly apply only to right actions. but they suggest certain other things about these right actions. A. That they are obligatory on a particular individual. B. That there are tendencies in the mind of the doer making him disinclined to do them. And C. That one and only one action is right at a particular moment. The word morals is used with a variety of meanings. For the science of ethics itself for action regarded as good and right and for the rules according to which such actions are done. 
It was originally derived from the Latin word mos meaning customs. The word ethics also derived from a Greek word also meaning custom. This normative science tells not what man actually do and actually think it right to do. It tells what man ought to do and what they ought to think it right to do. In this we study the standards by which we judge actions to be right and wrong, good and bad. The description of standards will develop into an investigation of the validity of the standards and we may call this investigation moral philosophy. There can be no sharp division between ethics and moral philosophy. Ethics is not a practical science. A science teaches us to know and an art to do, but a practical science teaches us to know how to do. Ethics lies midway between science and art. A practical science is concerned with means for the realization of definite end, but ethics cannot be regarded as a practical science. It merely tries to ascertain the moral ideal, but does not lay down rules for the attainment of it. It does not teach us how to live a moral life. It is the business of a normative science to define an ideal, not to lay down rules for its attainment. Ethics as a normative science discusses the ideal of goodness or rightness and is not directly concerned with the means by which this ideal may be realized. It gives us the knowledge of guiding principles of life, but does not tell us how to apply them. Though ethics is a normative science, it is not a practical science. It is a theory of morality and theory is bound to act on practical, but this does not make ethics a practical science. Ethics is not an art. Ethics cannot be regarded as an art. There is no branch of study which can teach us the art of life. Even if it teaches us the moral percepts or rules of moral conduct, it cannot teach us how to realize them in practice. Ethics is a theoretical science. It determines the nature of right and wrong with reference to the supreme good, but it does not teach us the art of living a moral life. It does not lay down moral percepts. It does not teach us how to correct our passions, resist temptation, strengthen our will and cultivate a virtuous life. Thus, ethics is neither a practical science nor an art. It is simply a normative science. Is ethics a science? A science deals with a particular department of phenomena. It deals with a limited portion of our experience. But ethics deals with the whole of our experience like philosophy. Mackenzie regards ethics as part of philosophy. It deals with the whole of human experience, but only from the point of view of will and activity. It considers man as doing or pursuing an end, but not as knowing or feeling. Ethics should be treated as a normative science. It is a science in so far as it deals with moral phenomena as distinguished from other kinds of phenomena. It observes and classifies moral phenomena and explains them by the moral ideal. It distinguishes moral judgments from logical and aesthetic judgments and reduces them to a system. Therefore, its method is scientific. It is the business of ethics to determine what human good is, but metaphysics investigates the nature of the universe and the cosmic good or the goal of the universe. So, ethics is not a part of metaphysics. Ethics should not be identified with metaphysics for three reasons. One, it assumes the validity of moral judgments and seeks to reduce them to a system. 2. It abstracts the moral value from the logical value and the aesthetic value. 3. It abstracts the judgments of value from the judgments of fact. 
Metaphysics investigates the ultimate validity of the judgments of value as well as the judgments of fact. True metaphysics is metaphysics of ethics. So, ethics should not be regarded as a part of metaphysics. But ethics as a normative science closely approaches philosophy. In determining the moral ideal or the highest good of man, ethics has to transcend observation. In order to inquire into the validity of the moral ideal, ethics has to enter into philosophical investigation. The question of the validity of moral judgments leads us to the discussion of the ultimate nature of reality. But metaphysical problems involved in ethical investigation are only assumptions. Ethics does not inquire into their ultimate nature and validity. The existence of God, the immortality of the soul and freedom of the will are the postulates of morality. But these postulates are not proved by ethics. Hence, ethics should be regarded as the normative science of conduct and not as a part of philosophy. Ethics is not a natural science too. Normative science is different from natural or descriptive science. One deals with judgments of value while the other deals with judgments of fact. Normative science deals with what ought to be while natural science deals with what is. Natural science is concerned with facts or events and normative science deals with a standard of value. Ethics is different from natural science firstly because it does not investigate what is. It is the science of the old, the ideal good. It investigates the nature of the ultimate good of human life. Secondly, because it explains man's voluntary actions not by their invariable antecedents or causes, but by reference to the ideal of the highest good. Third reason for the distinction is that it treats man as self-conscious being, whereas the natural science treats man as a biological animal. Man is conscious and also self-conscious. He is conscious of his relation to nature and society. He is a spiritual being seeking to realize ideals. Human conduct and character which involve the moral ideal cannot be explained by their antecedent physical, philosophical or mental events. Hence, ethics is not a natural, positive or descriptive science. Scope of ethics. The scope of ethics is the range of its subject matter. As a normative science, ethics seeks to define the moral ideal. It is not concerned with the nature, origin or development of human conduct. It is concerned with the ideal or standard to which our conduct should confirm. But in order to inquire into the ideal of the conduct, it must know the nature of conduct. Conduct is the expressions of character and character is settled habit of will. Ethics inquires into the springs of action, motives, intentions and voluntary actions only to pass moral judgments upon them. Ethics is concerned with the highest or absolute good. Thus, the fundamental notions of ethics are right, duty and good. Ethics is concerned with the nature, object, faculty and the standard of moral judgments. Moral judgments are always accompanied by moral sentiments. Ethics has an account for the sense of duty or moral obligation too. Ethics assumes the freedom of the will. It discusses the nature of human freedom. It inquires into the nature of responsibility. It gives the moral justification for punishment too. It determines the nature and kinds of rights, duties and virtues determined by the ultimate moral standard. Virtue and vice also comes within its scope. Though it has a province of its own, it has indirectly to treat of several problems which are psychological, 
philosophical, sociological and political in nature. The method of ethics. Different schools of moralists adopt different methods to investigate moral phenomena. They are the physical and biological method, the psychological method, the historical or genetic method, the metaphysical method. Though there are different methods of investigation in ethics, the true method of ethics is both empirical and transcendental. It is scientific and metaphysical, empirical as well as transcendental. It observes and classifies moral phenomena and explains them by correlating them to an organic system. But ethics does not explain the relation of moral ideal to the reality. It assumes that moral ideal is rooted in reality. Ethics observes moral phenomena, classifies them and explains them by the ideal of the highest good which transcends the empirical fact. The method of ethics is both scientific and philosophical that is empirical and transcendental. The end or aim of ethics is to define the nature of highest good of man as a member of society. It investigates the nature of summum bonum which is the highest personal good and the highest social good. Uses of ethics. Ethics attacks the basis of popular morality and places on a secure feeling all that is valid and essential in morality. By reflective criticism, ethics prepares the way for its constructive function. It separates the essential from the inessential, the permanent from the transitory and rationalizes our motions of right and wrong. Theoretical ethics is the secure foundation of practical or applied ethics. Ethics indirectly exerts a paramount influence on all departments of our practical life. The right solution of the vital problems of religion, politics, economics, legislature, education, etc. depends upon the correct notions of right and wrong. Ethics should embrace all departments of human action, exert an elevating influence upon them and raise humanity to a higher level. Now let us summarize our discussion. The word ethics is derived from the Greek word ethika and this word comes from ethos. Ethos means customs, usages or habits. Ethics is also called moral philosophy. The word moral is derived from the Latin substantive mos which also means customs or habits. Customs are not merely habitual ways of acting, they are ways approved by the group. Literally, ethics means the science of customs or habits of man. It is the science of habitual conduct of man. Habits are the expression of settled disposition of the will or character. Ethics is the science of rightness and wrongness of conduct. The rightness or wrongness refers to the good which is the ideal of human life. Thus, ethics is the science of the highest good. It is the science of morality. Ethics may be defined as the science of highest good. It is the science of the highest end or purpose of human life. Ethics is a science which is a systematic knowledge. It deals with human conduct together with the inner volitions and their motives systematically. It is a science in so far as it depends upon observation, classification and explanation of human conduct with reference to an ideal. Ethics is not a positive science, but a normative science. A normative science is also called a regulative science. Normative sciences are not concerned with actual facts or their laws, but with norms which regulate human life. Normative sciences deal with values. Though ethics is a normative science, it is not a practical science. Ethics cannot be regarded as an art. Ethics is neither a practical science nor an art. It is simply a normative science. The end or aim of ethics is to define the nature of highest good of man as a member of society. It investigates the nature of summum bonum which is the highest personal good and the highest social good. Ethics should embrace all departments of human action, exert an elevating influence upon them 
and raise humanity to a higher level. Now there are few assignments for you to work out. Number 1, explain the nature of ethics. Number 2, discuss the scope, methods and uses of ethics. Number 3, ethics is a normative science, explain. Number 4, define ethics, explain its scope and nature. Here are some books for your further reference. Number 1, J. N. Sinha, A Manual of Ethics, Sinha Publishing Private Limited, 1976. Number 2, William Lilly, Introduction to Ethics, Allied Publishers, 1975. Number 3, John McKenzie, A Manual of Ethics, Oxford University Press, 1883. This is the end of the session. We will meet again with a new topic in the next session. Thank you.